Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another fine Thursday on this purple website. I hope you're having a good old time, or a good day. If you're having a good time here already, I'm, I'm impressed. We've not done anything yet, but good times will be forthcoming, I bet. I hope. For your sake. Weird start already. Hello, though. I see you're already getting up to sh some shenanigans. Hype trading at level 5 before I've even gotten here. <laughs> I've almost missed the train. Gl Jax, I'm glad you're here because I... Alright, before we start anything else, I need y'all to see something. Um, I'm going to just throw this up on screen right now, Jax. I hope that's fine. <laughs> y'all need to see... Alright, it's very large, but hold on. Uh, y'all need to see this... Lovely bit of art that Jack's pool here uh, tweeted out earlier today. I think today's when I saw it. How cute is that? That is delightful. <laughs> I I save every bit of like Playframe fan art I see, just because it all makes me happy and it's just lovely having a big collection of it to kind of go back and see this stuff. And uh, I don't know. This this was a fun treat to wake up to this morning <laughs> really adorable really making that like making that dan jones poke trainer dan design work and <laughs> oh man just precious love it super good <laughs> Thank you for gifting that sub to Jax there. The nice guy is. Deserved. <laughs> and thank you, Jax, for the wonderful art. That really was such a delight. I need, I've got some other people to thank here before we fall too far behind. Before the train gets too far out of the station. So let's roll it back and survey the damages. Ashton, thank you for the 19 months. Kicking things off early <laughs> and being a bad influence on everybody else here. <laughs> thank you for the 14 months, the other KT. Mabel thank you very much for gifting five subs. <laughs> Can't stop, won't stop. Fair enough, but thank you. <laughs> thank you for those five gifted subs, Mabel And thank you for the 19 months, Louis Hansen. Gotta go for gold. I am. Listen, I'm way excited to get back into Pokemon Gold, which I am enjoying very much so far. I can see why it is the other two Dan's favorite one, or the Gen 2 in general is the other Dan's favorite one. Thank you for the five gifted subs, though, Effervescent Winter. <laughs> it's very generous, all you gift subbers, sub gifters, which, whichever one makes the most sense to you. <laughs> Thank you for the three months, Katasros. Once more, it is Pokemon Day. <laughs> right you are. And thank you for subscribing, Lonely Poro. Appreciate it very much. And thank you to you as well for the same thing, Binary Cats. Welcome to you both. And there's Baha Bali. <laughs> Just had a spider sense that people were gifting subs over here. And not one to be left out or shown up. <laughs> Baha Bali. Emerges from the shadows to do their thing. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're too kind. <laughs> choo choo indeed. You are all lovely. I hope you're having a good day. Thank you for the 19 months, Calvaberry. Hope I'm doing good. I am doing pretty good. I'm a little sleepy. But that's my fault <laughs> for staying up too late when I know good and darn well that I had a stream in the morning, well, late morning. But also, even if I didn't, that I just, like, I'm not the kind of person who can just sleep in as late as they want. It just doesn't work that way. <laughs> Otherwise, though, doing good and excited to get back into Pokemon Gold. Thank you for the 19 months, Valbatross. 
actually managed to code a branching dialogue system into my game today, and I'm so proud of myself that I'm using my sub message to brag about it. That's rad. Well done. That's cool. <laughs> I love a good branching dialogue system. Is this, like, your own, like, uh, indie game thing that you're working on yourself right now, or are you just, like, on the on, like, a larger team project you're working on? You don't have to specify if you're not able to. That's fine. But <laughs> I am just curious. But welcome all. I am very excited to get back into Pokemon Gold. I'll probably get us just switched over here in a sec. Just get us going. Okay, so your wife and you are trying to polish up the game you made for the Ace Roller Jam, so you're like three months into actually knowing how to program. <laughs> but you're already like, like coding, branching dialogue systems. That seems pretty good to me. Like, I'm sure there's plenty harder programming challenges to be had. I don't think there's ever a ceiling on hard programming challenges, but if I was three months into programming and making branching dialogue systems, I'd feel pretty good. So I hope you do as well. If you're enjoying all this music, by the way, and I certainly am, do, I highly recommend all of you, if you enjoy video game remixes in general, like, uh, there's a ton of great artists out there. If you're wanting a good way to kind of get acquainted with a lot of, uh, like, electronic ones quickly, like EDM, lo-fi, whatever branch you like, both Game Chops and Tiny Waves are very, very good, sort of like, label follows. They've got a lot of very, like, like a pretty deep roster of incredible talent that they uh, sort of publish tracks from. Yeah, Tiny Waves is the other one. Highly recommend Tiny Waves. So, like, one of my recent favorite sort of like EDM game remixing artists, uh, Arthur X Medic does a lot of stuff with Tiny Waves. I think there's been at least one or two tracks that involved them even just this morning so far. Yeah, th this remix right here is uh, one that uh, Tiny Waves put out on an album as well from Glintai. It's very good, good bunch. Right, I forgot we had that <laughs> Moobot shortcut. Thank you, Ashton. I should remember what I set into Moobot a year and a half ago and use it. Maybe add more things to it also. This is what happens when you get a YouTuber over on the Purple website. As a part-timer. <laughs> oh, dear. Like, I, I, I've applied a couple times for a partner here on Twitch and not been accepted, and frankly, I can see why. It's embarrassing. What are we doing over here? It's a pretty good call on Twitch's part. I think we can all agree. <laughs> Thank you very much for those 500 bits there. Akira Zero. As a child, I saw an Animorph character become a rabbit on a book. I thought it was cute. There was a book about Lego about Lagomorphs. Dagum it. I did not see that coming until the very last word. <laughs> Well done. Well done. <laughs> really caught me off guard with that one. It's 
Just getting ourselves all set up. Seeing if I can get those filters running. Nice. That is one real nice thing about, like, if you are going to emulate an old game, and in many cases there's not a lot of other options, realistically, uh, just in terms of availability. On top of just, like, easier access and all that, there's cool things you could do, like filters. Like, here, I'll, I might even show some of them off here for funsies, just to kind of, like, give you an idea. Or, like, shaders, I guess, is probably the better term. Uh... Let me fiddle around with some here and kind of show you what sort of things you could do. So, like, just real quick, by default, just popping over super briefly. So, like, this is what sort of like a more vanilla look is like, right? Just like this here. Like, I got one little shader going that is helping to smooth a little bit uh, of motion just slightly so we don't get too much sort of like shimmery flicker on the pixels when we're kind of like moving and it's sort of having to upscale in not perfect one-to-one -one, like uh, pixel perfect ways on this 1080p sort of display but this is more or less pretty similar to just sort of like the default output right Shifting back over real fast, let me set up another one. Yeah, like, there, there's some basic things that you can set up that are just, like, a basic bilinear filter that'll add a little bit of a kind of a blur to the pixels that'll help it... It won't make it look like it would look on a CRT, but it does re remove a little bit of that super crisp pixel perfect uh, pixeliness that is a little bit art... Like, kind of a... It's how modern pixel art stuff looks, but it's not how old games looked as they were displayed on their original screens, right? Well, let me, l let me, for funsies, load up a more, like, uh, much more noticeable shader effect, but also still a very cool one. Uh, let's see. Something that is more trying to imitate the look of a Game Boy Color screen. All right, switching back over. I don't know how that's looking on, like, streaming. But, like, that looks a lot closer to the screen, right? Like, how it would have looked on a Game Boy Color. <laughs> and I think the egg's about to hatch, so I'll reset in a second so we're actually getting footage of that. But, yeah, like, you can actually... They've got a little grid overlay that's sort of, like, breaking it up into individual little, like, uh, LCD pixel points so that you can see uh, so that like it, it looks more like the screen does. You're getting a little bit of that sort of uh, blur bloom effect. Uh, the slight little bit of light bleed from pixel to pixel as well. Uh, that sort of softens it all. They're also this shader is also like messing with the color spectrum a little bit to make it like more like the colors would have appeared on a screen. Like it's cool stuff you can really get like more like, way in-depth on. I'm just capturing these in their kind of, like, standard sort of sharp, pixel-perfect form, just because I think more people are just used to seeing that at this point. Uh, and also, I have a suspicion that is going to display a lot better with YouTube compression than fancier effects like this. Stuff like this can sometimes just turn to mud on YouTube. It might be in mud right now. <laughs> on Twitch. I'm not sure. Here, I'll switch back and I'll get us all Back to previous shaders and reset and all that. I don't know. It's cool. It's cool stuff to fiddle around with. Especially if you've got nostalgia for how these games looked and you're super particular about that sort of thing. And boy, some people are way particular about this sort of thing. It's a deep rabbit hole. If you're looking for one. Almost got us going here. Just a moment. Thank you for the 19 months. Rael Leardu. 
Hello, Dan and Chad. How's your Thursday going? Pretty good. Sleepy, but pretty good. Again, Twitch compression hates that effect as soon as you start walking. That does not surprise me. <laughs> kind of figured, but at least while I was standing still, y'all could kind of get the feel for it. And on the screen I'm looking at here, without that compression, I assure you it looks pretty good because it's applying a nice little bit of motion blur as well so that there's not kind of a... It sort of smooths the motion a little bit as you move. It makes it look a lot more like it did on those screens, is my point, which is neat if you're into that sort of thing. Thank you for the bits as well. Like two minutes ago, I'm catching up, or I'm non. Getting back from GDC was a pain. The airline mishandled and really damaged my luggage. Oh no, I had to go to court over it, but I was in and out in like 15 minutes. It was a briefcase. That's, that, that you already got court stuff arranged, ha like went to court and got it sorted that fast and we're in and out of court in 15 minutes is pretty impressive. I'm sorry it happened, but I'm glad that it, resolving it is at least seemingly going pretty fast. <laughs> I hope GDC was otherwise good. Thank you very much. Uh, I just realized, so I just, sorry, I was looking at, looking at chat and just realized that another pun slipped past me. Um, <laughs> right over my head. I am tired, apparently. If there was ever a time to try to get sneak a joke past me, this is the day. <laughs> Thank you for the 19 months, seven sunless days. <laughs> oh dear. Were you at, Remnon, were you at GDC at all? Or was this all a lie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, y'all are fun. <laughs> We're going to have a good time. All right, I think I got the screen set back up correct. I think we are about ready to do this. Let us switch over oh, one more time. Here we are. So, where on earth were we? We have done one stream. We've played about three and a half hours or so of gold. We've got one gym badge, which was pretty easy to get, all things considered. The bird gym was not ready for us. I am honestly a little surprised that the in-game clock is still correct. I guess I don't really know how that works normally, but emulators handling this pretty well. We are in... Yeah, no. We are in Azalea Town. We've just gotten here. We went through Union Cave, which as Pokemon Caves go, not nearly as big a pain as basically every single cave except Diglett Cave in Gen 1. We went to the ruins of Alf. Sprout Tower, that was a good time. Violet City. Cherry Grove City. That's about it so far. Arimnon was not at GDC. <laughs> I was set up. Your job doesn't think that a Colonel Driver Engineer doesn't need to attend game dev trade shows. That is a shame. My sympathies. I was not there either. I haven't been for several years. I kind of miss GDC. 
It is way too expensive to be there. They shouldn't be having that. There, there's a lot about GDC I wish was different, frankly, but I do miss it. See, the original game ran the clock on the game's internal battery. It was the only way, since pre-DS handhelds didn't have internal clocks. It makes a lot of sense. But okay, yeah. I think we've explored, like, a little bit here in town. Let's look at our lineup again. Let's, re let's refresh. We've got a Flaffy who we're honestly getting a lot of use of, and I'm very glad we caught this little Mareep. Not only because it's doing good work for us, but also because apparently Mareep is not in crystal. So, once we wrap up here with gold, which we might do today, we'll have to say goodbye to the good sheep. We've got a Pidgey who's an actual bird now. Pretty incredible upgrade from Gen 1. We're all very happy for Pidgey. We have our starter, a Totodile, who is doing fantastic. Very cute. We have Egg, who is about to become something more than Egg. We shall see. We have a Sentret, who's mostly just here to hang out and occasionally learn an HM, maybe. And we have a Wooper, who is definitely here just hanging out. We will probably replace Wooper once we have a good candidate for it. That's our crew. Now then. Better go ahead and hit record. Because <laughs> this egg's about to do something. Azalea Town has very good music. And I just remembered that this is where we're going to be starting out today. The Slowpoke Well. Also known as the Rainmaker Well. Locals believe that a slowpoke's yawn summons rain. Records show that a slowpoke's yawn ended a drought 400 years ago. And more recently, Team Rocket is... taking and selling slowpoke tails. Just like outright poaching. Gotta do something about this. There we go. Huh? Egg. Togepi came out of its eggs, mostly. Welcome to the team, Togepi. I don't... Other than... I know you were in the anime, and that's... The end of my knowledge about you. What... What are you about? You're about level 5, which... Honestly, could be better. <laughs> togepi. It's... It's a Togepi. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't even really have, like, a subtitle. <laughs> it is what it says on the tin. Normal type, okay. It knows how to growl and charm. These don't seem like... incredible moves. Togepi. We might have to put you up front. Oh, the subtitle's for nicknames. Wait, I thought that subtitle was for... Where does it show, like, its type? Wait, maybe if we look in the Pokedex. Do, 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 do. Wait, too far. Spike ball, there we go. The shell seems to be filled with joy. It is said that it will share good luck when treated kindly. It evolves into a decent but not especially useful Pokémon. It's pretty cute though, and it is new, so we'll let it hang around with us for a bit. All Pokémon from Egg start at level 5 in this game. I guess that's fair. Most of us probably would too. Anyway. 
How's it going? Hey there, Dan. The guards are uh, the guards up top took off when I shouted at them. But then I took a tumble down the well. I slammed down hard on my back, so I can't move. Rats. If I were fit, my Pokemon would have punished them. Ah, oh, it can't be helped. Dan, show them how gutsy you are in my place. Sure, do you need, do you want me to get somebody? Do you need help? I'll go handle this. Darn. I was standing guard up top when some old coot yelled at me. He startled me so much that I fell down here. I think I'll vent my anger by taking it out on you. Reasonable. A lot of people falling down wells today. I see you deal in rats. It's true, the rocket grunts don't have whips anymore. Thus far, my theory about Kanto from last time holds true. It's just a regional preference. I'm really enjoying Mareep slash Flaffy. I know we're still very early on. And I re haven't really got any favorite Pokemon, so to speak, but I feel like Mareep slash Flaffy is a good candidate for the short list. Stop taking tails. Yeah, just try to defeat all of us. Okay. Oh yeah, this is our first Girl Rocket Grunt, isn't it? Yeah. Modeled after someone in particular, clearly. Which I have zero problem with. The duo Butch and Cassidy, you say? You're meaning to tell me that they made another Jesse and James and then just made them look almost the same? <laughs> look at that pink little snake. I don't know why Ekans is pink now, but I'm a fan. Oh, are Butch and Cassidy the originals that Jesse and James plagiarized their whole stick from? I remember people mentioning that it was a... <laughs> that they didn't come up with their whole speech. Are Butch and Cassidy the ones they stole it from? Beautiful. I like it. You rotten brat. Mine. What? I assume that's a slowpoke. I'm enjoying the overworld spite, uh, sprite for slowpokes. Kind of fits them perfectly. Keep going, Flaffy. You know what? Flaffy's doing all right, levels-wise. Almost our front-runner at this point. Now is kind of the time, I think, to... Give Togepi a little bit of... upfront time. Quit taking Slowpoke Tails! 
If we obeyed you, Team Rocket's rep would be ruined. Can't have that. The sprite's not moving, it's throwing you off because you've only played Crystal. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Like, it is kind of weird that, uh, like, we've got these gen generations that we separate, uh, <laughs> that we sort of, like, separate all these games into, but a lot of the big animation updates and improvements happen in, like, within the gen. It's not even at the start of it. Get soaked. Gotta get you to 18, Totodile. Here, Togepi, let's get you a little more. The third game out of the gen seems to always have improvements for, for test stuff. Yeah, it, like, it makes sense as a space to try out a new idea built on the technology and the uh, sort of fidelity level that you've established with the first games in the gen. You got the foundation already laid. You use the third game to try out an idea on top of it. See how it goes. Decide whether you're going to carry that forward into the following gen or not. Because, like, Emerald is where, like, Crystal's the first big animation experiment. And then that, like, test run kind of gets dropped for Ruby Sapphire and Fire Red Leaf Green. And then Emerald is when full animation comes back and stays. And I think the animation approach in Emerald is honestly... It's definitely more efficient, and I think a little better, too, honestly. It's a tough call. Like, there's benefits to both approaches of how they animate things between the two. We'll be getting to Crystal soon enough. Next week, pretty much definitely. Given we're in Azalea Town already, and we're only going two or three gyms in, I think we'll be wrapping up gold in our temporary time with it today. Just too strong. A slowpoke with its tail cut off. Huh? It has mail. <laughs> Who's giving you mail? Dan read the mail. Be good and look after the house with Grandpa and Slowpoke. Love, Dad. It's getting very tragic down here, but as you can see from their faces, the slowpokes are taking it in stride. A slowpoke with its tail cut off. What do you want? If you interrupt our work, don't expect any mercy. So hang on, someone said something good. Uh, Gold and silver were designed to be compatible with the original Game Boy, despite being clearly made with color in mind. Crystal was exclusively made for the Game Boy Color, so it got to have a bit more processing power to play with, which would have let simple Pokemon, uh, let it have simple Pokemon sprite animations in it. That makes a ton of sense. Like, even if it wasn't a processing power thing, I could just totally see, like, adding animation for these sprites is adding a lot of art scope. Even if it's just a few extra frames of movement, when they first emerge in battle, which is what happens in Crystal. That's, like... Essentially, like, three to five more pieces of sprite art per Pokémon that need to be made, even if some of them are just kind of, like, small adjustments from frame to frame. On top of all the additional sprite work that they'd have been doing just for gold and silver in general. It would have made sense to me if that, as a feature edition, just got held, like, waited on until the next go-around. Will I, like, will I be doing, like, post-game content stuff? Probably some. Like, not... 
ton. I, I am mostly here for the animation, as folks in chat are saying, but uh, especially with the games that we're going to play like all the way through, I do want to see all the animation contents in them, which in some cases I think is going to mean playing post-game content or DLC in the case of the newer games. Hey, Togepi, you learned a thing. Yeah, Team Rocket was broken up three years ago. But we continued our activities underground. Now you can have fun watching us stir up trouble. I see. Oh, hello. Way to go, Dan. Team Rocket has taken off. My back's better, too. Let's get out of here. Okay. I really like the music down in that well. That's real good. What's up, Wade? Dan, howdy. It's me, Wade. Isn't it nice out? They're holding the bug catching contest today at the park. Dan, are you gonna go? I'll see you later. Thanks, Wade. I feel like with Crystal, we need to very selectively decide who we want to be hearing updates from regularly. I feel like we need one person from each region and an area, and different types of trainers, too, to get different kinds of updates. Hi, Dan. You handled yourself like a real hero at the well. I like your style. I'd be honored to make balls for you, a trainer like you. Thank you. This is all I have now, but take it. Ooh! Our first new kind of Pokeball. I make balls from apricorns. Collect them from trees and bring them to me. And I'll make balls out of them. You have an apricorn for me? Fine, I'll turn it into a ball. I do, I have a white apricorn. It'll take a day to make you a ball. Come back for it later. Neat. We're not going to be getting that ball. <laughs> the slow poke my dad gave me came back. Its tail's growing back, too. Oh. You guys just do that, huh? Yawn? Asked and answered. Well, let's get all healed up. Oh, we got a question from Effervescent Winter. When getting to Sword and Shield, will you be playing through again for the order or just jumping into the DLC? You know? I kind of feel like let's just play it again. Like, uh, I'll, we'll do Shield this time. Because it's got, like, a different gym. Uh, and yeah, because cause it's been some years now. We'll go through on Shield. We'll, uh, do DLCs this time. Might as well. At the, and at this time, we'll be able to better understand and note and appreciate what animation changes are happening uh, from Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. Because like we'll just have we'll have just those will be fresh in mind. We'll be able to actually like play it and try to note what's different, what's changed. So yeah, like we, we should do it again. We're a ways off, but yeah, for sure. By that point, I think sunk cost demands we play it again. <laughs> All right, I think it's about gym time now that all the slowpokes are hanging out again. Thinking deep thoughts. Bugsy, right. Bug Pokemon. What do I have that's going to be half decent against bugs? They are weak to fire. They are weak to flying. All right, Pidgey's got some work to do, and they're weak to rock, which we don't have. So, this is going to be Pidgey's show to star in, which is not great given their level 12, but they can work on that. In fact, I'm going to put them up front so they can work on that better. It is time for a real bird to have its day. And eat some bugs.
Now then. Yo, Challenger! Bugsy's young, but his knowledge of bug Pokemon is for real. I like that even the bug gym leader is also a kid. A bug kid. It's going to be tough without my advice. Let's see. Bug Pokemon don't like fire. Flying type moves are super effective, too. Thank you. I like that. No, not only are they not really listing off the gym leader in the uh, entrance pillars, but they're not telling us who's like gotten gym badges here either. Silver doesn't seem like the sword who's going through and getting gym badges. They don't, other than just making their Pokemon stronger, they don't seem like they care. Hi, are you challenging the leader? No way. It's going to be all bug kids in here. Cute. Twins Amy and May want to battle. Look at the little spider. Beautiful. Get you some levels, bird. Lediba. <laughs> Seems about right. Very good, very good. Oh, double goodness. <laughs> Our bug Pokemon lost. Oh, what a shame. Bug Pokemon are cool and tough. I'll prove it to you. Does definitely have kid energy in here. Hello, bug child. Keep them coming, bug kid. Bird needs levels. I do like Weedle's inquisitive little look here. They're doing like the little dog confused head tilt. Before poisoning you. Also like dogs. So close. I wonder when we get to Crystal, should I have our mom hang on to some of our money again? It seems a good way to protect yourself from losing a bunch of money from an unexpected loss. But then also we're having less money to work with and she spends it on random things that I forget to go pick up. Bug Pokemon evolve young, so they get stronger that much faster. The items she buys are fun, I feel. I'm game for rolling with it. Like, if this is... Like, the gen that adds that kind of fun little feature in, let's use it. Let's enjoy it while it's here. Good. A bee drill already. Kind of proving the kid's point about how early they evolve. Pretty good bee drill sprite, sprite too. It's really, there haven't really been any bad sprites at this point. They're, they've kind of got the on model look for a lot of the existing ones sorted. They can work with some more colors now, which helps a lot with clarity. Whew. 
That's a lot of experience. Hey! Good job, real bird. If we want a gen specific bird Pokemon, you vote for Hoot Hoot. Yeah, I, I'm kind of feeling Hoot Hoot for Crystal. At least early on. Or Skarmory. Ooh, I'm not familiar with Skarmory. Just evolving isn't enough. Yeah, right, let's go top off. Well, now there might be one more bug kid in here. Yeah, there is. We can we can take one more bug kid. You saved all the slowpoke? Phew, you're mighty. But my grown-up Pokemon are pretty tough too. Let's go, Josh. Boy, oh, Pidgey, you caught up quick. Okay, now let's go top off before taking on the leader. a real top tier town theme. We've already had a lot of good ones across Gen 1 and 2, but Isaiah's theme, very good. A neat touch for this gen. None of the Johto gem leader leaders use the same type as the Kanto gems. I love that. That's great. And why should they? There's so many types to work with. And the two regions are right side by side. It's a good idea. I'm working on getting dinner ready in a couple hours, and I needed to squeeze some fresh lemon juice. Naturally, it found a small cut on my finger I didn't even know was there. Yep. My sympathies. <laughs> Not fun. I guess you found it now, so... That's good. All right, leader of bug children. Let's go. I'm Bugsy. I never lose when it comes to bug Pokemon. My research is going to make me the authority on bug Pokemon. Let me demonstrate what I've learned from my studies. Tell me, Bugsy, does this does your Metapod do anything surprising? Or is it just going to be a Metapod? I see. Thanks for the seven months there, Lord Zine. Hello to you as well. <laughs> Metapod used Hyper Beam. That would... Bugsy would have earned it at that point. Two cocoon Pokemon, huh? If you insist. King Bug Child.
All right, you you definitely have something stronger for number three, though. Scyther, there you go. Now there's a bug. There's no hope for you, Scyther. Down. Yeah! And Pidgey's not far from evolving either, I don't think. Whoa, amazing! You're an expert on Pokémon! My research isn't complete yet. Okay, you win. Take this badge. Thank you. The Hive Badge. Do you know the benefits of Hive Badge? If you have it, Pokemon up to level 30 will obey you. Pokemon that know Cut will be able to use it outside of battle, too. Here, I also want you to have this. Fury Cutter. If you don't miss, it gets stronger every turn. The longer your battle goes, the better it gets. Isn't that great? I discovered it. Good for you. We out. And I think that's it for Azalea. Sorry about that. <laughs> You know, when you, like, reach for, like, <laughs> a tissue and then it, like, the whole box kind of, like, lifts with it and then clatters. That's what that was. All right. So, then. Get all saved up. Consult our map. Next stop is Ilex Forest, I suppose. How's our inventory? Potions good, antidotes okay. I think we're kind of okay here. Might stock up a little more. an item shop around here somewhere. There you are. Right, the very expensive charcoal. Uh, I'll grab another Pokeball. Another potion or three. Couple of those probably wouldn't hurt. Okay. Well, hello there. Tell me something. Is it true that Team Rockets returned? What? You beat them? <laughs> Quit lying. You're not joking. Then let's see how good you are. Okay. Good news, I found silver. I see you've caught a ghost. Little do you know, I have a real bird. That knows moves and everything.
Get out of here. A Zubat. This seems perfect for my Flaffy, but I'll actually let Togepi leech a little experience on this one. All right, Flappy, now you. Get Thundershook. Yay. Egg grow. Slightly. Bay leaf. Right, right. Yours evolved. Mine hasn't yet. Hmm. Pidgey, I guess this is you again. I do love me the Chikorita line. It is very, very cute. Whenever we get around to Soul Silver, I feel like that'll be Chikorita's day. Good Razor Leaf attack. It's a nice visual upgrade. Yeah, the attack animations really did get a bump in Gen 2. Yeah! Bird, do you evolve at 18 or is it like 20 something? I forget. <laughs> Useless Pokemon. Listen, you. You only won because my Pokemon were weak. I mean, yes, but there we go. Real Bird 2. Sequel to Real Bird. Yay. I hate the weak Pokemon trainers. Doesn't matter who or what. I'm going to be strong and wipe out the weak. That goes for Team Rocket, too. They act big and tough in a group, but get them alone, and they're weak. I hate them all. You stay out of my way. A weakling like you is only a distraction. You know, I bet if we, like, beat enough kids out in the field, we could probably afford to loan them some therapy money. We'll get there. Things have happened in chat. But also, thank you for the two months, Odinius. Very much. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Interesting fact. Bayleaf is one of only 12 Pokemon to have the same sprite in both gold and silver, implying it was a very last-minute redesign, which makes sense if you look up its really weird original sprite. Oh, cool. Yeah, that is true. Like, I, I always do forget that gold and silver have almost entirely different sprite art for all these Pokemon, which is kind of wild. I, I don't know if that's a, like... Good bang for buck value on scope. <laughs> I feel like I would choose to spend those those art dollars elsewhere if I was running this project, but still neat. It sounds like I can't remember if someone mentioned this in chat or if it was in a YouTube comment on the VOD or what. Someone mentioned that. Uh, a lot of the Gen 2 Pokemon had been kind of created and had some art, even in the Gen 1 days earlier on, uh, and that a lot of that kind of like first draft art is what eventually would show up in gold, and then a lot of the kind of overhauled second pass stuff is what ends up in silver, which like, I don't, I don't know the source on that. It's like, I, I believe it, but, uh. Yeah, I don't know what the source on that, or if that, how much of that is, like, 
confirmed development truth or just sort of fan theory that's sort of spread. That, that's a thing that I've tended to find when researching a lot of things about the history of various uh, games and the animation in them. There's some stuff that is spread around that uh, is just fact that like devs have talked about and explained. And then there are some things that fans kind of come up with as guesses that over time and enough times of people telling it to each other starts getting widely accepted as fact, despite never having a source confirming it at any point in history. <laughs> I've mostly encountered those things with Sonic stuff. Like the statement that Pokemon, like, that Sonic isn't very expressive, or like his model, 3D model isn't very expressive because one of the higher-ups at Sega has made it a rule that he can't show strong emotions. That's not true. <laughs> That's never been true. <laughs> anyway. Let's see. Some people are providing some more clarification on the sprite art thing. Let's see. Uh, reading back through the chat. Hang on. There is some art of proto-Pokemon in the game data and at game demos at old game shows. Oh, that's cool. Okay, it's more closer to near finished. We have an actual beta for Gold and Silver from Space World 2000 that actually has very early designs where some are very different. Oh, that's cool. Pokemon is very prone to invented interviews or one lines taken from fan translated interviews 25 years ago out of context, implying something that wasn't actually said. I have experienced that as well. Basically, every... For a little while, after the whole Pokemon Sword and Shield uh, sort of situation, I did, like, when I when I saw a s various assertions, anytime I saw an assertion that one of the, the devs had lied about something, or that they had been misleading, or that they had, that there'd been some sort of, like, dishonesty or duplicity or something going on with the National Dex thing. Every single time without fail, I looked deeper into it to find what the source was and what thing they were pointing to. It was always, always a single line taken somewhat removed from context that one developer on the team who might not have had anything to do with like animation, maybe like a producer on the team or something, said in an interview giving a very reasonable explanation for why the they were making the choices they were making and then like having that statement translated into English and then interpreted in the most reductive hostile way possible and then spread like wildfire throughout angry gamer communities and that's how you get a lot of people still today insisting that Game Freak lied about something and that the national decks not being included was not just a choice people didn't like it was an like a case of a wrong being done to people <laughs> like it i understand the need as a like it's a human impulse to want to find a reason to like if you're upset about something to skew that event in a way where it feels like you are right to be angry about it or that someone to find someone to blame like i get that that's that's a human thing to do it's very frustrating, though, <laughs> to see spreading around at large in little kind of angry echo chambers around this sort of thing. Like, this, this is why I keep on uh, stressing that, like, a lot of these, a lot of people are very wrong on the internet about Pokemon animation, but it is okay to be unhappy with how, they, like, Pokemon games are these days. There's nothing wrong with that. There's, you could, like, <laughs> there's valid criticisms to be made, and... Even when it's just down to preference. It's okay to not be happy with Pokemon games right now. That's fine. <laughs> but I, too, hate it when communities attribute malice to dev decisions. It is endlessly frustrating. And, sorry, we're just stopping playing for a second because I'm just kind of rambling. Because it's a thing I've been thinking about a lot, especially since we're seeing... I feel like in the last year, we've, had special, we've seen an even larger surge in this sort of... Uh, kind of fan anger backlash around various <laughs> things. 
St kind of thing we haven't seen since 2014, or at least not as loudly or as frequently. And it's it's angering because I like I understand not understanding a lot of things about how games are made and the realities of game development and how the industry works and stuff like that. It's it's a big complicated thing, but. These days, there is so much information for, like, if you want to know why games are made the way they are and why decisions are made, there is an abundance of information out there. Tons of devs talking about the process, tons of people explaining how the industry works. Like, people who are ignorant to the way the industry works now are, like, that ignorance is by choice. Like, they are, they are not seeking an answer, they are seeking a justification for being mad at somebody. And that frustrates me endlessly. <laughs> It would be one thing if you just couldn't, if the, like, the answers were not publicly available. And in the old days, like, when the game industry was just entirely opaque and there wasn't really much of an internet to <laughs> find this information from, like, understandable that, like, you t the information wasn't there. The information's everywhere now if you actually look for it. It's not hard. <laughs> it's part of why you don't engage with the majority of Pokemon fandom. Yeah, no, I, I understand. Like, it's, it saddens me that I like I don't really feel like engaging with much with most any gamer fandom these days, which bums me out. Like, there definitely was an era when like younger me did. Uh, like, I was there was definitely a sense of belonging in gamer communities and finding those online when you that didn't wasn't a thing that I had around me growing up. Uh, it definitely found like like it felt like finding my people. Like going to PAX for the first time felt like amazing in that way. And I still, like, feel a lot of that, like, I, I, but I find those communities in smaller, like, not just with everybody else who shares my interests, but, like, just with friends and groups of people within those interests, and, like, that's, that's fine. I, I just, I am, there's a lot of fan communities that are real and sufferable, and it, it <laughs> bums me out. Even fan communities around, like, wonderful, wholesome, very positive things. Like, how, like... Maddening is it seeing something like the Steven Universe fan community get wicked toxic. Like, <laughs> if that can happen to something like Steven Universe, man, what hope is there? <laughs> uh, very saddening. Anyway, thank you for the hydrate and stretch reminders, though. That's a good idea. Let's do that and then start heading out to get lost in some woods. All healed up. Squad is ready. I feel like we can all definitely relate to having... Finding a thing that is awesome. Loving it. Taking a quick glance to see, like, Hey, what are, like, what's the fan community up to? And then immediately slamming the door. Nope. Nope. <laughs> I've changed my mind. I'm out. <laughs> I'm gonna just keep enjoying this great thing on my own, thanks. <laughs> Alex Forest is big. Be careful. Don't get lost. That's good advice for any woods. The forest is watched over by its protector. Stay out of mischief. It's kind of ominously vague. Ooh! These Pokemon are just assailing us out in the short grass. What is this world coming to? For longer running franchises like Pokemon, I also feel like a lot of people, that is people wanting the feeling they remember in their nostalgia goggles, but not being able to accept that the reason they're not getting it is because they have grown and aged and changed rather than the games being bad now. Yeah, no, like, you're right. It's, it's the missing Pokemon. Oh, was someone missing? Farfetch'd, you were mit. Oh, and you're missing again. Okay. I should go talk to someone, apparently. Because I found their bird, briefly. Paris, I don't think we have one of you yet. 
Like, it's, it's another relatable thing, right? Like, it, it it's a sad feeling, or, like, it can be frustrating feeling like something you love isn't being made for you, or it's being made for somebody that's not you, because you're, like, it's a thing you're wanting to like, and you're excited about, and you're wanting the version of the thing made for you still. Like, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's relatable. It's understandable. But, like, it, it can be hard accepting that, like, not everything's going to be made for you, and that, that's his life. Doesn't make it any less sad or frustrating, but... But yeah, no, the... Whoa, it's Joan is right on the money in saying, I always try to remember that for every negative vocal negative voice, there's a lot of people who love that thing and are just enjoying it quietly. That is the thing to always remember. The people who are being loud and negative are a vanishingly tiny minority of the community, of every, of the fan community, every single time. A Paris is a mushroom. It is doused with mushroom spores when it is born. As its body grows, mushrooms sprout from its back. Like, I think there's an actual, like, kind of like, I don't know how I just walked past you. I think I was distracted by chat. Oh man, my boss is going to be steaming. The far-fetched that cuts trees for charcoal took off on me. I can't go looking for it here in the Nelex forest. It's too big, dark, and scary for me. I'm on the case. I think, yeah, I think that, I don't know if this is just sort of like a, uh, like, community management term or like a, or what it came from. Like, I, I think I'm going to be parroting this back wrong, so apologies, but it's something like the, it's like the 75%, 15%, 5% rule, or like, it's something like where... Somebody in chat definitely knows what this actually is, so please do correct me if you do. It's, like, basically the rule where, like, it's 80, 20, and 5. Thank you. Arimnon knows what's up. All right. So, like, 80% of the people who enjoy your thing are not engaging with stuff online at all. 20% of the people enjoying your thing are, like, looking online and seeing stuff now and then and enjoying it, and 5% are actually, like, engaging and chatting in forums. So the people who are talking and being really loud and negative are within that 5%. <laughs> That's, like, generally how it breaks down. It, may, it might be, like, 80, 15, 5, or something like that, or 75, 25, I, I can't... Whatever the split is, it's that. <laughs> or maybe it's, like, 80 and 15, and of that 15%, 5% are actually engaging. I think that might actually be what it's supposed to be. Whatever. Hey, Joey. It is nice out. I assume. I'm in the woods. Joris, you just started playing Crystal a couple days ago? Excellent. I'm looking forward to playing Crystal soon. Just as soon as we get, like, one gym further into here. What is that? When is that, uh, 80... 15-5 stat from? I don't remember is the problem. I I read it in, I think, I want to say, a Ask a Game Dev, uh, one of their blog posts, which is very good, by the way. Like, if you're wanting to kind of get some answers to common kind of questions that people would ask, like people who work in video games, there's a Tumblr blog uh, called Ask a Game Dev, all one word, from an anonymous person in the industry who definitely knows their stuff. It's not like they're the ultimate authority on all of these things. I've heard from other people in games who don't agree with all of their assessments of everything, but, like, they're clearly pretty knowledgeable. And, uh, the answers they give... I find generally to be quite good. Hello, bird. Come back here. Stop running. Come here. Hey. Bird, was, must we? It's 
Started replaying Crystal to get a refresh of the game. I'm doing a Mon type run. Fun fact for Gen 2, there's a total of two to three new Poison Pokemon, but my team is looking nice so far. <laughs> I guess they didn't need a whole lot of new Poison ones, given how many Gen 1 already had. How long am I planning to stream for today? I'm not sure. I do generally stream a bit longer on Thursdays, so... I'm thinking till like four or five... I want to basically stream as long as it takes to get through the next gym, unless it that ends up taking way longer than expected. Could you post the uh, 8025 Ask a Game Dev column? Sure, let me... Uh, hang on, let me... Do the thing. Here you go. I think for the next couple minutes, you should be able to post a link in chat for anybody who's wanting to read at least my source on that stat and the wisdom around it. There we go. It's in chat now, if you want to see the link. Bird. Stubborn little thing. <laughs> it's a cute little detail, though. Bouncing off the trees. There we go. Wow. Thanks a whole bunch. My boss's Pokemon won't obey me because I don't have a badge. Ah, my far-fetched! You found it for us, kid? Without it, we wouldn't be able to cut trees for charcoal. Thanks, kid. Now, how can I thank you? No, no, here, take this! Yeah! Good, good. That's the cut HM. Teach that to a Pokemon to clear small trees. Of course, you have to have the gym badge from Azalea to use it. All right, then. Senret, can you learn this? I wonder. Senret can learn this. Wonderful. Our little HM buddy's ready to put in work. And I can just select the tree. Yes, and it just works. Ugh. Boy, that's so nice. <laughs> that's so much nicer. Oh yeah, we could go back and fight the Wiggle Tree now if we wanted. When you play Crystal, will it be the original or will you use the version that was released on Virtual Console? They added back the Sela Bequest in the Virtual Console version that was removed from the original US release. Oh, neat! I did not know that. I will. Hmm. I, I was just aiming to do the original. I will... Before we start streaming it, I will do a test run. Let's see. Ilex Shrine. It's in honor of the forest's protector. Neat. I will do a quick test recording to see, like, what the capture quality and all that uh, looks like between emulated versus virtual console. But uh, if it's about equivalent, I'm down for doing the Virtual Console version. Paul Ombre was asking, like, are you wrong or, or am I wrong or did the Ask a Game Dev folks just take that kind of 80, 15, 5 number from nowhere? I'm not saying the article's bad. I think it's more of a, a hypothetical to say that most of the people just don't engage. But the closest there is the stim uh, the estimation from the Dark Souls, which is just one example. I, I am guessing that it is kind of a broader, like, uh, not scientific, uh, like, not really a... <laughs> scientific study that has resulted in that uh, exact breakdown. 
But though I am guessing that uh, the way that they come to those sorts of numbers is like the devs would be able to pretty easily know like, all right, here's how many copies of this game we have sold. Here's how many people are like registered like on our forums or are, are following these the subreddits around our game and all these sorts of places. And here's all the people within there who are actually like actively posting and engaging in it. Like, like the article also mentions, do you know who actually tracks these numbers? We do. We track all of it because it's vitally important knowledge for us to make our future business decisions. When your game logs in online, we check. When you register your game on your website, we check. When you create an account for our forums, we check. When we redeem a code for DLC, we check. That is, and that is also true. That, that, those numbers are all like, like devs and publishers and fo like folks are definitely keeping track of all that data for all of their games. And yeah, it's not really meant to be an exact thing. It's meant to just be a general trend that, like, kind of across the board, the people who are engaging in online communities and talking about your game are a pretty small percentage of the people actually playing it, uh, which is mostly just useful for maintaining perspective on uh, the feedback you are getting. If a lot of people in the forums are saying that a thing in the game should change, like, maybe they're right, but you shouldn't just, just because you're hearing from a lot of uh, folks in your forums about that does not necessarily mean that they are correct or that even all of your player base agrees with that. Like, it's a, it's, it's mostly just a mechanism for maintaining perspective. Uh -huh. Let's see now, though. More into the woods. A lot of low-level bugs out here, Pidgeotto. I don't think you're going to get a whole lot of experience out of all this. Should probably put someone else up front at this point. It looks forest is so overgrown with trees that you can't see the sky. Please watch out for items that may have been dropped. I'll do my best. Yeah, this would be a good chance to put Togepi out front. Go ahead and use metronome. See what you got, Togepi. Odd animation for... <laughs> for metronome. Fun, though. Hey, it's Dan Jones. Hey, bud. How you doing? Don't tackle the egg. It's a baby. Make these some pretty good metronome rolls, Togepi. You've only got ten of them. Togepi, who taught you to curse? Which of our other Pokemon has been teaching the egg swears?
You think it's the bird? Yeah, I'm trying to think. In our lineup. These aren't very good metronomes, Togepi. What are these moves, Togepi? Dragon Breath? Alright. Last chance. Perfect. There we go. Good job, little egg. What's up, kid? What am I doing? I'm shaking trees using headbutt. It's fun. Here, you try it too. Oh, thank you. Rattle trees with headbutt. Sometimes, sleeping Pokemon fall out. Weird. Um, should we teach headbutt to somebody? I guess so. Who in our crew... It's going to be good at headbutt. Pretty much everybody. Not Pidgeotto, but... Hmm. We could give it to Togepi. Togepi could suddenly have, like, a decent move. <laughs> I kind of feel like it's Togepi or Totodile, one of the two. Eh, why not? Togepi, let's give you something you can actually do. Perfect. It's weird that it's not an HM, but you can use it out in the wild. Nothing. I'm only going to try this a few times, Togepi. There's a lot of trees out here. Oh, hey! Caterpie, I can fight you without stopping to hit every tree. Second. True arm arm toast are almost gotcha. Here we go. I think that should work. Yeah, there you go. Okay. You can also go back to Azalea and headbutt trees in town for different encounters than in the forest. Oh, that's neat. Probably not especially worth it for this playthrough since nothing you'll catch will be strong enough for the next gym without grinding. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. If this were the crystal kind of all the way through run and there was some particularly neat Pokemon to go and <laughs> knock out of a tree somewhere, I'd be up for it.
Headbutt the bug. Perfect. I gotta say, I'm feeling like the woods, caves, all that stuff are way less of a pain in the butt to navigate in Gen 2. Like, I don't... <laughs> I don't hate them by the time I've reached the end. Thank you for the 19 months, by the way, King of Doma. Oh my goodness, I can actually say 19 months. That's almost two years, legitimately, without be it being a Loading Ready Run meme. I wondered what that... <laughs> What that meme had been in reference to or from this whole time. Didn't realize it was a lure thing. Did you see the shrine honoring the protector? It watches over the forest from across time. I think that it must be a grass type Pokemon. That would be my guess also. Hi, Butterfree. Oh, honey, you're making a Pokedex. Must be hard if Pokemon won't appear. I'll try using this TM. Oh. What is it? Sweet scent. Use it wherever Pokemon appear. Pokemon will be enticed by it. Oh, well, that's cool. I like that. Berry trees grow new berries every day. Make a note of which trees bear which berries. I won't, but that is good advice. I don't think we need to be grinding up Togepi's levels at this point. I think Totodile should start getting prioritized a bit. This is where I do my training. And you've decided to make that my problem. How's your rat still just level seven? It's very unfortunate for it. Spiro. All right, Flaffy. Time for you to do your thing. Quite the variety of Pokemon this kid has. All of them lower than level 10, though. Except for the Sandshrew. Which will not save it. So close. Here, Totodile, you can fight this one too. Get you that level. I should check and see if Totodile's better at the special attack or the physical. Better at physical. Not always ideal, but... Yeah. Yeah, definitely better at physical a little bit. But now it is time... for our happy little guy... to grow. And become smug. 
Croconaw. The caveman look is a choice. I just got my Pokemon back from daycare. Let's see how much stronger it got. This is a common parent experience, I take it. That sprite's very cute, though. Snubble. I'm giving your dog, question mark, a bath. I see your dog bites. There we are. Why does it end this way? <laughs> That's just how it goes. You've chosen the wrong 10-year-old to challenge. I'm the best in my class at Pokemon. Well, then let's see how good your class collectively is. It's a good Mankey Sprite, at least. Let's try using Rage. More rage. Pretty good. Sprite qual quality really is... Ow. Much more consistent this time around. You there. Don't think you can hide from me. Cute little hop though. Go ahead, Pidgeotto. I see. Have we decided that Diglets are, like, singular members of chat? Doug Trio is the collective. The Doug Many. Pretty good Bulbasaur, too. You appreciate that the flashing effects are less painful this gen? Yeah, I noticed that, too. It's... Quite the improvement. Like, attack animations are more visually interesting generally across the board, and yeah, less of them involve just big flashes. Very much into that. No, I just can't win. That's okay, you're not alone in these fields. I think you'll find you and everybody else out here has a lot in common. I'm on patrol for suspicious individuals. Best of luck to you, I guess. What's this? 
Daycare. Let us raise your Pokemon for you. I'm the daycare man. Do you know about eggs? I was raising Pokemon with my wife, you see. We were shocked to find an egg. How incredible is that? So, want me to raise a Pokemon? Actually, yes. Hmm. Well, maybe I suppose I shouldn't hand off my... head-butting Togepi. I suppose you could hang on to Wooper. Wooper, be good. That take care. Okay, I'll raise your Wooper. Come back for it later. I'm the daycare lady, I see. Do you know about eggs? My husband and I were raising some Pokemon, you see? We were shocked to find an egg. You guys have like a script? Oh, so if you drop off two Pokemon, is it two of the same kind, like same species, or just two Pokemon in general? A male and a female one, you will get an egg. Messed up daycare, man. Oh wait, we actually see the whooper in the field. Cute. Boy, look at the long range on this one. I'm confident in my ability to raise Pokemon. Want to see? Camper Todd. <laughs> yeah, that's a Psyduck, all right. Breeding is one of those Pokemon rabbit holes that goes real deep. So I hear. Gold and silver were released after the Porygon incident, where during an episode of the anime, there was a massive red and blue flashing that hospitalized some kids, so Game Freak especially took pains to reduce flashing animations. Which is for the best, because not like it was a big problem on Game Boy screens, but still. Much appreciated all the same. Oh right, Psyduck, you are a water type, aren't you? Get scratched instead. Very good. Let's see. Flaffy, you sit up front for a bit. Route 34, Goldenrod City. That's where we're headed. In fact, I think that might be where we are. Lovely. Gold buildings, pink streets. I'm liking it. Making good time out here. That's a big store. Let's poke our head in. Mom's good at bargain hunting. She always buys stuff at lower prices. I'm raring to shop again today. Welcome to Goldenrod Department Store. First floor of the service counter, second trainer's market, third battle collection, fourth medicine box, fifth TM corner, sixth rooftop square. The department store has a decent selection, but some items are only available as game corner prizes. Oh. 
What is it, Wade? Dan, howdy. It's me, Wade. Isn't it nice out? My Weedle's looking awesome. I wish I could show you. I've made way too many bug kid friends. Now then. Welcome, how may I help? We got potions, we got antidotes, we got all kinds of things, but I'm pretty good on all this right now. I will start grabbing these, though. Start stocking up. A revive would also be a good thing to have. Maybe one of these for emergencies. See, I find the inexplicable depth to Pokemon battle, breeding, nature selection, and such to be strangely incongruent with a handholding easy mode feel the series has going. Is a new game plus with increased difficulty that difficult to include? Yeah, uh, it is. Yeah, yeah, no, like it is a new, a big feature addition design wise, at the very least, if not. Uh, on the a bit on the coding side less so on the art side since you're going through new stuff a ton but like yeah like designing a hard mode basically means for the designers you are designing another run of the game with a higher difficulty with higher levels more kind of choosing what all the trainers will have on them like what moves they should have it's uh yeah and a lot of testing beyond that so it's a lot of uh not nearly as much work as making the base level run of the game with all the assets you need for that, but it is more work for sure. And I imagine Pokemon's already a pretty steep design challenge as it is, given even without, even foregoing the national decks, that is so many Pokemon and so many moves to try to keep any kind of balance going at all. <laughs> but, but, like, design balance to be enjoyable for the kids playing and still also providing the uh, power users enough to latch on to and enjoy. It's not impossible, but it's, it's not nothing. I, I, I'm really impatient. I use X speed in battle to speed up my Pokemon. Welcome, how may I help you? I don't know. I like, I really appreciate there being descriptions. Raises special stats for one battle, defense, attack. Ups critical hit ratio, prevents stat reduction. Neat. And yeah, Liang Nui is right. Like, part of what is so kind of brilliant about the way Pokemon works and is designed is that wrong stairs is that the there's a lot of depth to it but it is entirely opt-in which is not easy to do like having tons of depth for the people who want to go way deep on it but kind of uh, obfuscating enough of it to where casual players aren't feeling overwhelmed or like there's something they're supposed to be doing that they're not, or even just feeling like, or, or even just like sacrificing their ability to teach the game and make it seem nice and simple. I love strong Pokemon. I feed them protein to crank up their attack. I feel like there's other franchises that have been less good at figuring out how to ease new players in to sort of a simpler version of what their game is. And then like, what, <laughs> without overloading them on that sense of, like, full depth way too early on. You can't rename a Pokemon you get in a trade. The name is a reflection of the original trainer's feelings for it. 
which is kind of nice, if inconvenient. All right. All right, we, we may not see what the move is called, but we can see what it does. An electric punch may paralyze. A fiery punch may cause a burn. An icy punch. An attack that makes foes... may make the foe flinch. That's headbutt again. Nice. Okay, we can just buy more of it if we want it. It's very nice. This is a realization I recently had with trading card games, but it applies to Pokemon too, I think. The competitive side of the game gets so vocal and riled up, and usually with decent justification, but they also tend to forget that they're 30-year-olds playing a game primarily targeted at 10 to 15-year-olds. Yeah, I think that is the kind of Pokemon community in a nutshell. And a lot of communities, uh, like game fan communities, uh, like the hardcore folks, understandably, eventually kind of lose sight of what the sort of new player's experience of a franchise is, because they, like, they haven't been a new player of that thing for a long time. So, like, uh... <laughs> like, it's very easy for them to forget that, the, like, who the game is catering to, and to think that what is affecting them as a super hardcore competitive adult player is in any way impacting or even visible or noticeable to the vast majority of other players who are experiencing this for the first time or are younger, things like that. And Pokemon is and has consistently remained a franchise that is aiming to appeal to kids. Like, they're, they're trying to also be appealing to adults and who have nostalgia for it, but they are never doing so at the expense of their younger, like, potential fans who they're wanting to get hooked on Pokemon and continue to succeed at doing so. So they're, I think they're making the right call there. You're saying I should try talking to the girl in green, you say. Mystery gift. With just a little beep, you get a gift. What? I'm confused by this child. I collect Pokemon. Do you have Drowsy? Want to trade it for my Machop? No. On Sundays, a lady comes to check out Pokemon. She even gives away TMs. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's right. Like, sort of like weekly events and stuff, too. Neat. Do you listen to Lucky Channel? If you want to win, trade Pokemon with as many people as possible to get different ID numbers. If you're tired, try the vending machine drinks. Your Pokemon will love them, too. Don't mind if I do. Let's get us a lemonade. Clang, a can of lemonade popped out. And much faster than it takes to buy lemonade <laughs> in Gen 1, which I appreciate. I think this is the top, yeah? Yeah, it is. All right. Good store. Basement. Hello? Um. Hey, kid, you're holding us up. Our policy is to work behind the scenes where no one can see us. stuff on the ground's junk. Take it if you want it. Uh, thank you, I will. I lose my passion for work if someone's watching. Come on, kid, scoot. Sorry. Hmm. Am I going to need some strength to move some things around? Ah, uh, Emmons, hello! Playframe says this is their most favorite shop on the Poke Island. <laughs> it's a pretty good store. I feel like I do need strength or something, though.
What else we got in this town? Your playground. Goldenrod City Game Corner. Oh. Sure. Oh, the crates move day by day, I see. I couldn't win at the slots, and I blew it on card flipping. I got so furious, I tossed out my coin case in the underground. Guess that's where I'm headed. Good jams in here, though. I won't quit until I win. I always play this slot machine. It pays out more than others, I think. I'm gonna need a coin case. Or maybe I'll just do that when we get to Crystal, I don't know. Big town. Whew, this is one big town. Yeah, I agree. One big town. I don't know where anything is. Same. Are you a trainer? I got a useful phone number for you. Do you? Oh. Bill. My big brother Bill made the PC Pokemon storage system. Oh. Oh, you collect Pokemon? My son Bill's an expert. He had to leave for the Pokemon Center in Ecrotique City. Neat. Now we know Bill's origins. Oh, this is how you get to the underground. There you go. There are some shops downstairs, but there are also trainers. I'm scared to go down there. Yeah, trainers. Ugh. Hate them. I got booted out of the game corner. I was trying to cheat using my Pokemon. <laughs> so it seems... That they made the right call. <laughs> I like that Grimer. It's got a very sort of help me energy to it. <laughs> Grimer wants uppies. Yeah. <laughs> that is that is the pose. <laughs> uh, ah, Flaffy, you can get it. How does a Grimer cheat in a casino? Well, see, this one's really good at counting cards. Crocodile, your turn. What a good water gun effect. Yes. Get out of here, super nerd Eric. Stop cheating in casinos. My Pokemon just got hair just got haircuts. What? I'll show you how strong they are. <laughs> there's a there's a lot about Isaac or Isaac that I don't fully understand. Furthermore, I don't think Lickitungs have hair. Lots to unpack. And let's say you.
Oh, so they have some friendship mechanics in here that I am not familiar with. Is there anything that has animation to it? Or like, new animation of any sort? Does anyone know? Not really? Okay. In which case, we can probably... Just wait till Crystal to see more of it. Unless we just happen to stumble upon it along the way. Neat, though. And a good addition. Especially in a game where your antagonist is all about just strength and not taking good care of Pokemon. Like, adding features that emphasize caring for them. Good. The Pokemon Salon. I'm the older and better of the two haircut brothers. D wow. I wonder how the other brother feels about this. I can make your Pokemon beautiful for just 500. Deal. I feel like of all of them, Flaffy would probably appreciate the trim most, but I do expect that this haircut brother is going to actually suffer some injuries in the process. There, all done. Flaffy looks happy. Oh, good. Dan, I want to do a thing. Are we doing Gem 3 and Gold before Crystal? Sure. I mean, we're in the town for it, so unless there's something that's stopping me from doing it, I say yes. Do you consider type alignments in battle? If you know your type advantages, you'll do better in battle. I've heard that. Some Pokémon need happiness to evolve. I have heard of this before. Look at that tiny, cute little Magnemite. It's so little. Headbutt it. Ah, a prediction has been... Initiated. Win channel points if you make the correct prediction. Time to gamble, chat. This is the town for it. Magnemite, are you steel now? Is that why physical attacks aren't working? I think it is. Yep. Steel type done been introduced. <laughs> Cute animation for withdraw. I guess Metronome's a great way to just see a whole lot of attack animations at random. Including Parish Song. Whoa. <laughs> Both Pokemon will faint in three turns. I've never heard of that move before. Alright, uh, maybe we better swap you out, huh? And just sort of run out the clock. Togepi, who taught you that song? The fact that we're betting on my fate in this upcoming gym gives me mild concern. Nothing to worry about? That's good. This is a good thing to test, actually. Togepi, does your death counter continue after being removed and with that fight ending. We will find out. Bonk. Oh yeah, seems like you're safe. Good. Probably not a good matchup we got going here, though. Especially with the reduced defense. We're not very good against electrics right now. Pretty bad against electrics, 
to be honest. And that would make me worry that perhaps here in Goldenrod we would run into an electric gym, but knowing what I do now that Johto does not reuse any of the gym types as Gen 1. Whatever I'm about to walk into, it's not that. Good job, Tokabe. Super curious what kind of gym we're going to be stumbling into. What sort of things have we not encountered yet? So, like, we've obviously not run into a steel gym, because that's new, so that could be forthcoming at any time. We've not had a ground gym, I don't think. We've had a rock gym. We've had a water gym and a grass gym and a fire gym. And a bug gym. And a bird gym. We've had a psychic gym. Well, yeah. No, we've had a psychic gym. I don't know if we've had a ghost gym. The psychic gym used ghosts, but I don't think that counts. We've had a fighting... I guess we had an unofficial fighting gym. I don't know if that one counted, given it wasn't the real Saffron gym at the time. We gotta find some better way to take these Magnemites out. They don't seem to have electric moves that I've noticed, so let's see how correct I am about that. Is Dark in, uh, here in Gen 2? I think it is. I don't think we've gotten one yet, but... Was Viridian ground? I thought Viridian was normal for some reason. I guess we haven't had a dragon gym either. No entry beyond this point. Door's locked. Dang, I was gonna disobey the sign. I think you have some rare Pokemon with you. Let me see them. You could have just asked. The Pokemaniacs are a lot. But I do like their slowpokes. Should probably heal Flaffy, huh? Yes. Grow strong. Hey, nice. There we go. Where am I? I was challenged to a battle downstairs. It's rough down there. You better be careful. Um, I guess I'm in a different part of town? Name Rater. Nice. The man at that house rates your Pokemon names. He can even rename your Pokemon. No need, but thank you. There's the gym. Nice. 
And uh, Goldenrod City Pokemon Gym leader Whitney, the incredibly pretty girl. Okay, um, that isn't a type to my knowledge, but I am new to Gen 2, so... Once while I was battling, my Pokemon couldn't make any moves. The, po the PowerPoint or PP of its moves were all gone. Sometimes a healthy Pokemon may be unable to use its moves. If that happens, heal it at a Pokemon Center or use an item. I should do that pretty soon here. La 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 la. Have plenty of water, my lovely. When I watered that moving tree on Route 36, it jumped. I think it must be a Pokemon. But it would take someone like Whitney, our gym leader, to beat it. Hmm. Which could be a hint if it's something that's strong against grass, which would be fire or ice or poison or flying or bug. Oh, if it's ice, I can actually see why this is a hard gym. <laughs> Uh... Oh boy. Okay, I'm gonna... Stop at the Pokemon Center. If I could fly, I would go and grab Wiggletree. But I don't feel like running all the way back to Wiggletree, so Wiggletree can wait. If it is ice... It's good against... Uh, ice is weak to fire, it is weak to fighting, it is weak to rock and steel. Cool, we have none of those. That would... I'm predicting now that it is ice because that is a type that thus far, like I've not been super thorough, but thus far there have not been a lot of opportunities to get something that is going to be good against it. If we'd I think there was, like, a Geodude available somewhere earlier on, but I did not get it, so... We are going to have a good time. True... Does water resist ice? I don't think it does. Ice resists ice. But at least here in Gen 2, water does not resist it. According to this, anyway. Unless I'm reading this wrong. I might be. I am. I am. It is half. You're right. You're right. Water resists ice. So does fire. And ice as well. And steel. Oh boy. Okay, well. Let's win at some games. Or lose at some games. Really, let's just stall. You have no coins. Right, right. Excuse me. Who's in charge of giving me coins? Welcome! We exchange your game coins for fabulous prizes. Which prize would you like? Coins. Who gives me coins? This is not helpful. Hey. Somebody give me coins. Thank you for the two months, Dr. Fox. Cost a thousand for fifty coins. Gimme. Oh, and there's a bunch like hidden on the ground. Right, right. Just like last time. I'll just keep clicking around a bit. Or give up and just play with the ones I have. That works too. Play with three coins, let's go! Choose a card. This is a very different game. All right. <laughs> a very different and somewhat complex game. Uh, let's see. You gamble on this, these machines while chat gambles on the next gym battle, yeah. It's roulette, but with a deck of cards.
Three of Pikachu, Emmons, I like your guess. Darn. <laughs> Six of Oddish. Oh, but now it's like removed it from the deck. I see. Interesting. What happens if we do like a whole row? Four of Oddish. Okay. I imagine if we were guessing an entire row, we are... We're, yeah, we're like reducing our uh, multiplier of like winnings, right? Like it'd be like 24 as opposed to 6 or 3. Yeah. I gotcha. It's gonna be Pikachu one of these times. On a three. A lot of oddishes in this deck, huh? Ah, oh, well, at least we're in Pikachu lands now. <laughs> Come on. No. And there are a limited number of times you can play, too. I can see it counting down. I'm seeing a guess for Oddish 1. Yo! <laughs> Yen! <laughs> <laughs> wow, good call. <laughs> All right, what, what's this? Uh, what's this other game that's in here? Apparently, <laughs> that was cool. Uh, ah, oh, okay. Here we go. Three coins. Let's go. Oh, very close. Dang. Oh, neat. It didn't help me, but neat. <laughs> One more go. Squirtles! Nice. We've doubled our coin earnings. Or, yen doubled our coin, coin earnings to be more accurate. <laughs> if I wanted to play Bellatro so badly, I could have just said something. <laughs> That's true. I guess I could have just played Bellatro today instead. It is a very good game. We haven't gone in here. What's over here? The world is a cycle path. Bike shop. Hey! Are bikes still the most expensive thing on Earth? <sighs> I moved here, but I can't sell my bicycle. Why is that? Could you ride a bicycle and advertise for me? Yeah. Really? Great. Give me your name and phone number, and I'll loan you a bicycle. That went much easier. My bicycles are first rate. You can ride them anywhere. Phenomenal. So now... Select. And... Yay. Hooray. Ah. Is this... So th this theme sounds kind of similar to the Goldenrod City theme we were just hearing, but like sort of more jaunty. Is the bike theme in this game just similar to the Goldenrod theme, or is there like a different bike theme for different areas? <laughs> I imagine the first thing, but the second thing would be very cool.
Just one bike theme. Yeah, that, that makes sense. All right. Hydrate reminder, that's a good one. Saving as well. Especially given what we're about to walk into. You know, maybe also just a quick, like, bathroom and snack break. So all of you, go take a moment. Get yourself some sort of drink or a snack. Run to the bathroom, whatever you gotta do. We will return in a few minutes. I'll run an ad. And then we will see how this gym turns out. See how many of you guessed correctly. <laughs> so I will be RB. Get snacked up. Okay, we are back. We are back. I return. Snack has been gotten. Cat has been pet. And we are about ready to resume. Also, we've received a phone call from a certain bug child. Or youngster, I guess. I'm not going to do it for this first attempt going into this gym, because I, I don't know for sure, I guess, what, uh, what typing situation we're about to walk into, but if it is ice, Croconaw is at least a little bit safe from the worst of the damage, but... I guess none of us are weak to ice, but none of us are strong against it either. And I think if I need, if I get stomped and need to get creative, I'll see what sort of stuff can be caught around that might help. We can also buy like fire punch and stuff like that from the shop. Is flying weak to ice? Ah, oh, okay, I gotcha. So one of us is weak to ice. But we could get Fire Punch. I don't know if anybody on this crew could use it, but... Togepi's probably, like, our best bet there, and that's got its own problems. But... It's an option, I guess, is the point. Let's go find out what type we are looking at. So I shouldn't get too ahead of myself with my guess. But I'm pretty sure pretty girl type isn't a thing. Yo, champ in the making. This gym is home to normal to oh, normal type Pokemon trainers. I recommend you use fighting type Pokemon. Yeah, that's a great tip. Normal's not what I'd have guessed. In that case, like... I guess a similar situation... None of us are inherently weak to it, but who knows what moves... could be thrown at us. And we also do not have a fighting type or any fighting type moves to speak of. If we had a ghost, if we had a ghastly, that could potentially be really helpful unless they have non-normal moves to throw out. Not at all what I saw coming. I, I am still kind of slightly relieved it's not an ice one, I'll be honest. I know that doesn't mean this is going to be easy, but... Ice was more immediately scary. Give it your best shot, or I'll take you down. I 
They're not goofing around in here. It's a pretty good Meowth, though. Pretty big level jump, too, it feels like. Certainly above a lot of the average trainers we've been seeing out and about. It's interesting. It being normal type definitely keeps me on my toes more. Because, on the one hand... Yeah, I will change Pokemon. Like, one of my instincts is to feed Croconaw as many levels as possible, make Croconaw as strong as possible, just try to power through. But if one of her Poke normal Pokemon comes at me with some move that water is weak to, then there goes that plan. Yeah, hey, thanks for the uh, two months there. Jules. Oh yeah, I definitely need this after all the processing I did in therapy today. Take him down, Dan. Well, I'll do my best. Seems like I'm going to be tested a bit more this time around. Hyper Beam's a normal type move. It's a fair point. What isn't weak to Hyper Beam to a certain extent? <laughs> At the end of the day. Kind of scary normal type moves. In a way, yeah, like normal is actually very intimidating because it is. There's a lot of strong normal type moves, and it's also just such a wild card. <laughs> I like you, but I won't hold back. That's fair. Yeah, there's like there's an unpredictability to normal type, Alistair. That's a good way to put it. But also a cuteness. Look at that Centret. See, your Centret's level nine. That's really a false sense of security you're trying to trick me into here. Not like Miss Level 16 over on the other side. Um. Yeah, keep going, Croconaw. It is, I'll be honest, it's kind of fun going into a gym actually having any cause for concern, like feeling sort of like a, ugh, what am I in for in here? It's a good feeling. Feeling like, all right, I'm about to be tested. That, that feels like what stepping into a gym should feel like. And Kid Me definitely felt that more. I think like the only reason I don't feel that more by default is that I've played, I haven't played a lot of Pokemon, Pokemon but I've played enough to where I like, all right, all right, I know what I'm doing. I'm walking into a gym, I should be fine. Uh, <laughs> so I don't feel it as much anymore as an adult, but it is kind of fun walking into one, having a little bit of that uncertainty. Do you want us to leave the rest of the gyms as a surprise going forward? I think that might be fun, honestly. I think that, that might be a good idea. Like, preserve that sort of first-time experience, unpredictability. Don't let me... Like, we can kind of, like, collectively let the gems of these different games catch me by surprise. And because maybe it's entirely possible that I will not have the type coverage I need to be fully prepared for one and have to improvise. Like, that's fun. I like that. I think that'll be more fun for everybody. And it definitely means we will hit some roadblocks along the way without question.
Fun little garden maze they've made for themselves in here. These forgot potions only give you 20. Fun fact, this gym layout is a simple sprite of Clefairy. That's cute. <laughs> I would not have noticed it. Don't think I'm a pushover. I, I expect... I've been conditioned to think nothing in here is going to be. Glass Carry is here. With her level 18 snubble, which is... Not something you can just easily push over. Wide stance on that snubble. Oh, it's friendly. My attack. I'm not using that, but no. <laughs> Don't you make scary face at me. On, like when <laughs> when the sign outside said that this was the home of pretty girl leader. Like, if fairy type did exist in Gen 2, that was going to be like, all right, well, I guess fairy type has like kind of a, they kind of lean into cute and beauty with fairy type. Maybe that's what they're doing. But since it wasn't, <laughs> I had no idea what to expect. And normal definitely was not in my top three guesses. <laughs> Which one's the leader? Oh, there. You are the leader. Okay. Let's stumble through one more. I like cute Pokemon better than strong Pokemon. Based. But I have strong and cute Pokemon. <laughs> that Jigglypuff looks more ready to mess you up than any Jigglypuff art I've ever seen. <laughs> That, that Jigglypuff is just like, what did you say? <laughs> you can come a little closer and say that. Okay, um... Flaffy's doing pretty good, too, but Crocodile, let's keep feeding you. You're our starter. Starters are pretty strong. On average. Rage! Fine. Not rage. Whatever. Bath. Don't think you can defend yourself from bath. Get out of here. Go cool off, Jigglypuff. <laughs> oh no, this Jigglypuff rolls deep. I don't know why seeing didn't affect Crocodile, but I'm grateful. Another one, wow. Seeing has low accuracy. Oh, I did not know this. Thank goodness.
Ah, close. All right. Let's go heal and prepare. The trainers on the run-in were not like pushovers, but didn't create any real problems. But that doesn't really mean anything. That we could still be in big trouble. If Whitney has either Pokemon with some really mean moves or just Pokemon that are high level, like in the low 20s or, God forbid, mid 20s. Man, being able to pull out the bicycle just by hitting select is huge. That, being able to use cut without having to go into your menus, be, like, those little changes from Gen 1 to Gen 2 are <laughs> the best thing in the world. I love it. Overpowered, yes. Emmons, why do I not have you listed as a VIP yet? I keep forgetting, literally every stream. I keep, every time I see you in chat, I think, like, oh, why haven't I added Emmons to the VIP list yet? I need to, I need to do that. And then I forget. Every single time. <laughs> yeah, and you'll send me a reminder. Thank you. Today might be the day. <laughs> All right. Save time. I'm going to keep Flaffy coming out first to get that paralysis going up front. At least, let me keep going first. Let's see how it goes. Yeah! Hi, I'm Whitney. <laughs> Thank you, Sonic. Everyone was into Pokemon, so I got into it too. Pokemon are super cute. You want to battle? I'm warning you, I'm good. So I hear. like nice basic spray like that looks like a normal type trainer <laughs> leader Whitney wants to battle only two Clefairy all right level 18 that's acceptable depending on what it does I am not too mad at this currently it has metronome that's very wild card Cool looking animation, too. I don't remember. I feel like Clefairy's gonna have a lot of special defense. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the bits, Effervescent Winter. Yeah, I feel like we better swap in someone a little sturdier. For this nonsense. Yeah, that metronome nonsense really <laughs> makes it hard to plan. Hey, thank you for the five gifted subs. Baha Bali. I see a hype train is rolling in for our potential stomping here, but no, oh, we'll see. Let's see how the physical defense on this thing is. Pretty good, but we can try to build up some steam. Harden's not, not the worst thing you could have rolled on Metronome Clefairy, but it's not my favorite. <laughs> Stop slapping my Pokemon. I don't think my building rage is going to outpace the Harden. Well, I take it back. <laughs> Good job, Croconaut. And there's a level, good. That won't hurt. 
Trying to learn Bite. Ooh. Croconaut can't learn more than four moves. Delayed and older move. Yes. Which move? Leer, probably, right? Or maybe Scratch. Because Bite is Bite a dark move yet? Yeah, it is, it is dark now. So maybe it's good. Rage is normal, though, and Rage is probably better than Scratch in almost any scenario, so getting rid of Scratch makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Now, in Dark, is it's also like... Is it a dark move that is also a special attack, as in, like, special attack damage? Or just... <laughs> it is special this gen. Okay. Yeah, let's replace Scratch. What does Dark do against... Normal, if anything? Yeah, standard. Okay. Mill tank. That's new. Is this where the fun begins? Could be worse than level 20, but still concerned. And fast, too. Wow. Ouchies. Stomp. Well, that didn't work. Okay. Togepi won't last a turn. Uh, let's see. We could try to, yeah, let's try to lower its accuracy a bit. If we can make it not hit anything, then that changes the situation. Whew. Strong hit, though. Keep dropping it. Okay. Let's see, then. Probably should have more super potions in here. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Impressive it's still hitting after having accuracy lowered a lot. Keep dropping it. Keep dropping it until... Oof, fainting. Or until... It can't hit anything anymore. Okay, good. There we go. Just try getting in a little bit of offense while you're still around. Sorry for the bad sounds in the meantime. Whew. Mill tanky. Hey! Uh, if I didn't thank Effervescent Winter for the five gifted subs, thank you. Sorry if I missed that before. Uh, Grizzhood and friends, welcome. Thank you for the raid very much. Hello. I appreciate it. Sorry you had to come in at a time that sounds very bad. But the situation is much better than it looks. <laughs> and sounds. <laughs> Thank you very much for the raid. Hi, I'm Dan, if you don't know me. I don't know how clutch that rollout miss was. I don't. T I've not been paying close attention to the chat, as I am nervous. About the cow. If Pidgeotto just solo, like, obliterates this thing... I think we have to get some give some incredible props to like real bird two here. All right, it finally connected. But wow, Pidgeotto hero. It's gonna make this fight actually work. 
Cure Togepi, distract it while I feed a potion to Croconaw. Thank you for subscribing, Jax Gulch. And thank you for the 19 months, Just Ember. It is the mill tank, I know. Togepi is in trouble, but that's okay. It's a diversion. Not a lot of evasion on the Togepi, it seems. Come on, Togepi, it can't see. All right, Croconaw, now is your time. I saw that earlier, by the way, Grizzhoot. Longtime fan of Playframe and New Frame Plus and extra credits back in the day. I'm very flattered. Thank you very much. And, th and thank you a lot for the raid. I appreciate it. I'll give you a shout out as soon as I'm not terrified of a cow. Uh, get raged at? Milk drink. I don't like the sound of that. No, I don't like that at all. Regained health, which, so long as health doesn't also mean accuracy, is fine. Hmm. It's not a good time to flinch, Croconaw. All right, it's still missing. Good. We've been working on building a weird 3D VTuber avatar using the Kinect. Using the Kinect? Interesting. Although, like, the Kinect had a pretty good camera for that sort of thing, like... I can see that working. How's it going so far? Stop it, Mill Tank. If I can just keep building Rage up. Does Rage... Like, I assume Rage is just, like... The way it functions is just the move itself is getting stronger with every successive use. Does the Rage build-up also power up other... Attacks? Stop flinching. Cow. You do have to keep raging, okay. Uh-oh. That's new. <laughs> Croconaw, now's not the time. Yeah, I see why this cow has a reputation. Infatuation kept it from attacking. Oh dear. And the rollout hit. That's concerning. Croconaw, come on. I'm going to need you to focus. Oh boy. We had a pretty strong start to this, but I am now a little more concerned. I don't know if the just potions we have lying around is going to do it. We do also have some other items we could potentially deploy. I might look into that. Thank you for the gifted sub there, Mr. Aranax. It's very kind of you. Just do a couple potions here for safety. Yeah, 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 go on. Um, think, think, think. <laughs> My eight-year-old is watching live for the first time. Mind giving a shout out to Alex? Two of his favorite things, Dan and Pokemon. <laughs> well, hello, Alex. Thank you very much for watching. I, too, am enjoying Pokemon, although this particular Pokemon I'm caring less and less for by the day. Croconaw and I are not on the same page when it comes to this mill tank. I got some other items around, though, like... Let's raise that defense. While we're at it, let's raise that attack. That's going to help, I think. 
I do also have a full heal. I don't really know if that helps with infatuation so much, but... We've really set ourselves up for success here, though. Like, it can't see. We are stronger and better defended. There's rage, at least. I don't know if it's... It's probably lost a lot of potency on account of not having raged in a bit. I just hit you once, Miltank. Come on. I'm going to try using that full heal. I am confident it's just going to use an uh, attraction or whatever again on me, but... Won't have any effect. Dang. I fear this attraction is not going to wear off. Hmm. Oh, I could leer. That's a good idea. Why did I forget I had leer on me? Here at it. Crocodile focus. There you go. That's a start. Come on. Keep going. Thank you. Apparently my croc is also a brick wall for Whitney. Yeah, no, this is definitely a... <laughs> immovable object, unstoppable force thing. It's going to be a lengthy brawl, but the fact that it can infinitely heal itself to full is concerning. That is not a thing I can do. Keep lowering the defense. It's not going to help with a bite attack. I guess I haven't tried water gun either. I haven't really tried to see what the... Uh, special defense on this thing is, but I'm guessing it's pretty good. Definitely better than its regular defense is at this point. Come on. Croconaut, it's hitting you over and over. This is not a healthy crush you're fostering. Oh, thanks for the subscription, Grizzhoot. Much appreciated. Okay, defense is done dropping. We can start playing Pokemon again. Uh... Let's try a bite just to see what happens, but, uh... Eh, 
It's okay, but I feel like subsequent rages will do better. Much better. Yeah, if we can keep rage going, enough of them, hopefully it will outpace what Miltank can self-heal. Come on, Croconaw. Croconaw. Like, I realize it would probably make me lose the uh, axe attack and defend I put on. It is tempting to s switch in and out to get that attraction there. Whew, boy. This team earned it. <laughs> oh, wow, well, you're mean. I'm mean. <laughs> you shouldn't be so serious, you child, you. I mean, I am 10. <laughs> But you're not wrong. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Snivel hick, you meanie. Oh, sure, I'm the bad guy here. <laughs> you can't turn this on me. Oh, no, you made Whitney cry. It's okay, she'll stop soon. She always cries when she loses. <laughs> That's a pretty funny joke. I like that. <laughs> Especially after such a very difficult fight, like having someone like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Save real fast. <laughs> that does remind me, I should probably ask for the gym badge, huh? Unbelievable. We've never seen a cow this huge. What is it? You're amazing. This is not any kind of cow we've known. It's hardly an animal, this. <sighs> we've finally been surpassed. <laughs> Here's plain badge. <laughs> uh, a good old beige badge. Let's you use strength outside of battles. Also boost your Pokemon speed. Oh, you can have this too. It's attract. Makes full use of a Pokemon's charm. Isn't it just perfect for a cutie like me? Really worked well for you. Croconaw would have ended that fight a lot sooner, I think, if it weren't for that. Yowza! Yeah, I see why that fight is a brick wall for a lot of people. I got lucky. And yeah, Croconaw would have been obliterated without Pidgeotto. If... Uh... I'm blanking on the name. Flaffy. If Flaffy had managed to get the uh, Thunder Wave going, that would have helped. But yeah. Whew! Scary. <laughs> Whew, thanks for the stretch reminder. That's much needed at this point. Whew. Yeah, I think we we all have to give some props to actual bird two here for that very clutch <laughs> sand attack volley. That's made it possible at all for Croconaw to come to win that one. <laughs> that was pretty amazing. And honestly, like, a good note for real bird here to go out on, because in Crystal, we are aiming to be using almost entirely Gen 2 Pokemon where we can, so we'll probably have a different bird in there, but... <laughs> Pidgey got to have an incredible showing <laughs> on that last run. 
You usually grab a female Geodude ASAP when you play specifically for this fight. Since it's female, can't be hit by attract, and as a rock ground type, it resists all her moves. Yeah, that's a very good strat. Good thing for us to maybe consider doing in Crystal. <laughs> Smart move. <laughs> you make a lot of good points. This makes me really want a mill tank on our team. If they're actually catchable. That was a doozy. And it seems like a pretty great note to... I was expecting to stream longer today, but that is a pretty great note to... <laughs> wrap up gold on, I think. It's gonna be hard to top that. I feel like... Yeah. No, I've, here, we'll... We'll call it a little bit earlier today. As a result of... How darn good we did. <laughs> And lucky we were. And uh, on... And uh, next week, we will start up Crystal. Which I'm very excited for. Yeah, I'm ex like, I've been enjoying Gen 2 a lot. Like, diving into it and being more thorough. Like, doing a full playthrough. I I'm way excited for. I think technically, in or Japanese release order, Stadium 2 came out in between uh, Gold, Silver, and Crystal. My copy has not arrived yet, though, and I'm impatient, so we'll just bump Crystal ahead, do Stadium 2 in between Crystal and Ruby. Congrats on beating Whitney on your first try. That really is an impressive accomplishment. Thank you. I feel like I, I appreciate that y'all weren't giving me any, like, tips or spoilers or anything on the way in. I think just knowing that I was in for something made me, like, the trepidation alone might have been all the edge I needed just to, like, be careful and take it very seriously. <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel very happy with how that went. <laughs> I can see a lot of ways that that could have gone so much worse. But yeah, let's, let's start winding down here. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining. This, like, Gen 2 has been a blast already. I am way excited to get the crystal. Hang on, what did the king just say? Ah, <laughs> oh, you defeated Whitney then, Prince. Fine work. Hmm? Oh no, we're being sincere. Once we took the Johto League challenge, and of course it ended with her, we could we should send Queen a letter. She'll be thrilled to hear. Maybe Hap Map will ask her to prepare a feast of burgers for the occasion. <laughs> it's very cute. Thank you for the bits, Baha Bali. It's entirely too kind of you. You're all entirely too kind, as always. But yeah, thank you everyone for subscribing and for following and watching for the bits for the raid <laughs> as well you've all been very fun to experience these pokemon games with am i planning on picking cyndaquil for crystal because i want to do another fan art oh that's so sweet of you i think yeah yeah let's do cyndaquil for crystal and then uh chikorita can come in later for soul silver down the road gonna be a good old time so next stream should be probably tuesday starting at three uh pacific it's possible that i might hold off on that stream if i am wanting to just get in more time uh working on a new frame plus video maybe maybe not we'll see how i'm feeling but uh if the stream doesn't happen on Thursday, then we will just do it one week from today, uh, starting at 11 Pacific time, 11 a.m. Get a nice, long start to Crystal, which I, mm, I'm impatient for at this point. New Frame Plus video? Yep, yep, working on the next one of those. It's time to get to the animation of Final Fantasy VI. Which is very fun to work on. 
Lots to talk about in it. Anyway, let's see. Who's playing right now? Surprisingly, not a ton of people on, but it does look like the Loading Ready Run folks are getting some Magic the Gathering going, and it looks like they also just started. It is Thursday Drafternoon, which is a very good show title. <laughs> Lur does a lot of Magic the Gathering stuff, and they're extremely entertaining, lovely folks. Hey, before I go, actually, I should... I wanted to give a shout-out to... Grizz, are you still in here? You are, I think. I'm partly just doing this so I can remember how to do this correctly. Did it work? No, it's slash shoutout, that's right. There we go. What a YouTuber. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, Lur's been going for a little bit and they are wonderful people. Great fun. Have I VIP'd Emmons? No, that'll, that I will be doing immediately after we get this raid going. <laughs> Finally. But yeah. Let's go say hi to the good lure, folks. Loading Ready Run is wonderful. A high-quality bunch. Who absolutely deserve your follow. They do a wide variety of things. And many of the people involved are also the folks who run Desert Bus for Hope, which Carrie tends to join each year. Excellent people all around. So let's go say hi. Thank you all for joining me, and I'll see you next week for Crystal. Bye!